Hello and welcome. I am Miss Biz and welcome to Magicka Sork DPS School Part 2. Part 2 is all about finger pressing. What do I mean by finger pressing? Of course, I mean skills and rotation. What skills are you going to use and in what order? Skills and rotation is an extremely important part of any DPS in any class in Elder Scrolls Online. You can have all the best gear, you can have all the champion points, but if you're not using the right skills and in a pretty decent order, you are not going to have very high DPS. Even if you do have all the right skills, practicing your rotation is a huge factor in your DPS. I'm sure you've been over to the likes of Alcast's website and made your character perfectly match, and then when you go to parse with the target dummy, you're about, oh, I don't know, 40,000 less DPS than he does. Don't worry, I was the first time I tried to, but once you learn about rotations, you'll see your DPS go up. I'm going to try to keep the majority of part two on this guide pretty simple in the terms I use and in explanations, but to give yourself a really good background at rotations and DPS, I really, really think you should go read Maplinator's Guide to Getting Good at DPS. It is hosted on my website. I've got a link below in the description and Map covers a whole host of things, including rotations. I really want you to go read that Make sure you do it as soon as you're done watching this video, or you can always pause this video right now, go read it, and come on back. For the most part, here's how rotations work. You're going to have dots, which are damage over time. They, well, do what you think they do. They do damage over time. While your dots are running, you're going to use some other skills possibly, and what many people will call your spammable. Once your dots run out, you'll want to reapply them so that they keep doing damage and then just fill in that time using all your other skills and once again, you're spammable. That is a rotation at its absolute basic, most basic format. Magic Assort DPS lines up with this pretty well. We have a couple different damage over time skills that we'll use as well. Just everything kind of lines up nicely time-wise. The one thing that Magic Assorts have that kind of throws a kink into a rotation is Crystal Fragments. Crystal Fragments is a skill that is a sorcerer class skill that does big damage and it's awesome to use, but it's kind of random because you only want to use it when it procs. That means when it actually costs less magicka to use, it's instant cast and does more damage. That's the only time you want to use it and that's kind of random. If you're not confident with messing up your rotation in order to take into account when Crystal Frags decides to proc, don't worry, I did include some rotations that do not use Crystal Fragments. If you're having a hard time and Crystal Fragments is causing you to mess up your rotation constantly, you may be doing better DPS without it. To help explain rotations a little bit, I'll explain static versus dynamic rotations. A static ro rotation always uses the same skills in the same order constantly. They never ever vary what order they are actually pressing the skills in. A dynamic rotation, on the other hand, is actually going to change up what skills they use and when to make sure they're getting the best uptimes on all their skills. All of the rotations I'm going to show you here today are going to be mostly static. If you can make just the front bar portion of it a little more dynamic than I will emphasize on, then you will be doing even greater DPS, but I'm not focusing on largely dynamic rotations. We're going to keep it nice and simple with mostly static rotations. Something to remember is that during our static rotation, we are going to be basing our whole rotation off of when Elemental Blockade runs out. This means every single one of the rotations that I have to show you today does use Blockade of Storms, and we are going to consider it the beginning of our rotation. When Blockade of Storms runs out, you better be done the rest of your skills and recasting Blockade of Storms. Damage over times are super important, especially ones like this, where not only is it a damage over time, it's also an AoE area of effect, so it's actually going to damage multiple mobs at the same time. Dots are super important. 
Of course, you don't want to be recasting them too often and too early, or else it's just a waste of Magicka. Here you can see how I'm going to base my simple little rotation here around the uh, elemental blockade. Just going to continue using my spammable and whatnot until it runs out. I'll flip and reuse it and continue on my rotation. Now, if I'm reusing it too early, I'm not doing any extra damage because I can only have one elemental blockade down at a time. So really, I'm just overwriting my last one and it's not doing any extra damage. Dots are extremely important, but you got to be a little bit careful about how you apply them. You want to make sure they're always up, but you don't want to overlap them too much. Our rotation will completely hinge on when elemental blockade runs out. This allows you to focus a little bit more and have a set start time and end time for your rotation to make it simpler to understand and stick to. If you're having a hard time keeping up with my rotations, feel free to take out as many spammables as you need so that you can actually be putting elemental blockade down again when it runs out. You'll notice even in my rotations, I didn't specify exactly how many crushing shocks or spammable skills you'll be using. That is because it all depends on how quickly you get through your rotation. So what's the deal with weaving? Weaving is not cheating. It's not a bug. It is here to stay and it is what makes combat feel fluid in Elder Scrolls Online. Now, what weaving, just weaving by itself is, is putting a light attack in between skills. Here you can see I can just use my skills all in a row. And I'm doing not bad DPS here, just using all of my skills over and over and hoping that they're all just doing lots of damage. I'm pulling about 22, 23k DPS right now, just using my skills. Now I'm going to start adding in light attacks in between every ability. Here you can see I'm doing a little bit of animation cancelling, but not a whole ton. We instantly increased our DPS by quite a few thousand, just by adding those light attacks in between. Now, you do not even need to go that fast. If you are just doing light attack, skill, light attack, skill, light attack, skill, light attack, skill, you are still going to be increasing your DPS. This is because there is a global cooldown in ESO and light attacks and skills go off different cooldowns. So what a global cooldown is, is that I can only use one ability skill per second. I can try to press the abilities as fast as I can with my mouse, but they will not process and I can only use an ability once every second. Now, light attacks and abilities are on different cooldowns, so you can go ahead and use a light attack when you would not be able to use an ability yet. Now, we can also go backwards with this because ESO has to have priority in their animations. If you're trying to do two things at once, Elder Scrolls Online, the game, has to decide what is more important to be showing. And this is where animation cancelling comes into it. They believe, and I believe this is the correct order, skill animations are more important to be shown than light attack animations. This is a full light attack animation. Here is when I cancel it. You'll notice that only part of the light attack animation really finishes before my skill animation takes off. That is because I'm pressing my skill ability right after I press my light attack button. Another cool thing to see is that bar swaps supersede abilities. So I can press an ability and then bar swap right away. You barely even see my ability go off but I bar swap and the ability did go off. Here's Elemental Blockade's full ability animation. Here is when I bar swap it. That is what animation canceling is. Now, it can only go in that order. There are a few other things where, that involve block and bash and all that. For, but for the purpose of PvE, player versus environment, those ones are not important and I am not going to teach you them. 
Just remember that skills override light attacks and bar swap overrides skills. Now, because of this, when you are learning to weave, you'll want to do kind of a rhythm. The rhythm will be like a heartbeat. Dun dun, dun dun. The first dun is your light attack. The second dun is your skill. So you'll want to go light attack, skill, light attack, skill, light attack, skill. If your light attacks are not firing off, that means you're likely going too fast and you need to slow it down a little bit. As well, if you're going skill light attack, you may not be getting your light attacks off at all because a light attack cannot override the skill and the skill animation must finish. So if you tried pressing light attack in that time, it's not going to happen. Weaving is really, really important to DPS and I really recommend you practice it. You do not have to get crazy good where you can't even really see your skills fire off when you bar swap. Believe me, you don't need to be that good for it to help. Just being able to put that light attack in between all your skills, even, you know, a little slower maybe and slowing down your rotation will increase your DPS. I highly recommend you practice it. It's important, more important than you probably care to think. Just start with simple weaving. Just practice with light attack and you're spammable. Don't worry about doing your whole rotation. Just try to do light attack spammable and just get a feel for it. Then just go through your bar one skill at a time, not necessarily sticking with your rotation and just do a light attack before each skill just to get a feel for how it feels. I'm going to cover some of the skills that I'm going to be using during this video to showcase a couple different rotations. First, we are going to start off in our destruction staff skill line, crushing shock. Crushing shock is my spammable. It is my spammable of choice. You can choose the different morph, which is force pulse, and it does a little more DPS, but crushing shock interrupts casting enemies. This means it stops enemies from doing certain moves. It is really, really, really handy, has a lot of utility, so I prefer using it over the Force Pulse Morph. This is also generally what a Magicka Sorcerer will use as their Spamble, unless you're choosing to use Psychic abilities. It is available from the Destruction Staff skill line. Another ability I'll be using from the Destruction Staff skill line is Destructive Touch. Destructive Touch is a damage over time skill, but it is single target, meaning it only affects one mob at a time. Generally, I'll be using it on front bar, so it'll be Flame Touch, knocks the enemy back. We're really going to be focusing on boss fights though, where that effect doesn't come into play, but Flame Touch will do a little bit more damage over time because of the flame damage. This is what I'll be replacing Crystal Frags with in the rotations that do not use it helps keep it to be a little more static of a rotation. Of course, elemental blockade is what I did mention, which is your wall. This you will be using in all the Magicka DPS rotations, whether you're a Sork or not. Definitely a very important skill to have. It is AOE and it's a dot. So it does damage over time, plus it can hit multiple, multiple enemies. So that's really, really good. We're going with the Elemental Blockade Morph because it has an extended uh, time. We enjoy the extended time because that way, oh, extended time and width, I do believe, or length, one of the ways, it's a larger wall. You can hit more enemies with it as well. It allows more abilities to be fit in the time that this is ticking and running. Elemental Drain, I will be using whenever I fight a target dummy. I really recommend you use this. You level it up and use it whenever you're practicing or parsing. This will be used to give your target minor Magicka Steel. Generally, you do not use this in Overland because the fights are quick enough. It's not necessary. And if you're doing group content, generally the healer will be doing this. So when you are parsing or practicing on a dummy, please slot this where you would normally put your shield. Now I'm going to go through the different skills in the Sorcerer class skill lines, starting with Dark Magic. Crystal Fragments is something we already kind of covered where you only want to use this ability when it procs. That's because nobody really cares for cast times, they feel clunky, and they're just kind of a bit of a DPS loss. 
Next up, we have our Daedric Summoning Skill line, which is where I'll bring your attention to Haunting Curse. Haunting Curse is kind of weird. You might think it's a dot because you have to wait for the timer to run out, but it's not constantly doing damage. It just does two big explosions. One explosion at 3.5 seconds and then another one eight and a half seconds later. Something to keep in mind with Haunting Curse is that if you let the first explosion go off and then you recast it, before the second explosion goes off, you won't get that second explosion from the first curse you had because only one haunting curse can be active at, at a time. So it actually overwrites it. So always make sure that your second explosion happened before you recast it. Bound. Bound armor morphs into this. This is a really nice skill. It will increase your max magicka. I actually do not use this skill actively, as in I do not press the button. So if you have a hard time hitting number five, for example, on your keyboard, I suggest putting this as number five or something like that. You won't ever actually be pressing this skill and using it, but you just want its passive effects of increasing your max magicka. Uh, it also gives you minor ward and minor resolve. This increases your spell and physical resistance, meaning just it makes you a little bit tankier, um, helps your survivability a lot. Mage's Fury was an execute, the sorcerer execute. I do not use these if I'm using an asylum staff in my rotations. I did offer some rotations with or without it. I personally find if I'm using an asylum staff, it's not worth it, but if you're not, definitely worth it to be using it. Uh, execute ability means it's an ability that does more damage once the enemy is below a certain percentage of health. For Mage's Fury, this number is 20%, so you definitely want to use this instead of your spammable once your enemy is under 20% if you are using it. It does a bunch of shock damage, Sorks have passives to do with shock damage, it's really, really a nice ability. Liquid Lightning is another ability that you will see in every single rotation I'm about to show you. This is because it's another AoE dot, which means area of effect damage over time. So it's kind of like the blockade, the elemental blockade, the wall. But this also offers a synergy. So your tank is going to be very happy that you're offering him a synergy um, to use as well. It does a bunch of shock damage. Like I said, Sorcerer have shock passives and... Just the more dots, the better. They are super, super important. It also lasts pretty long. It actually lasts longer than your blockade. So that works out pretty nicely to make sure it's always up. Power Surge is an ability that I'm not going to actually have in any of my rotations today, but I want to bring your attention to it. Power Surge offers you uh, the ability to actually increase your spell damage by 20% in the way of major sorcery. Now, normally at high ends, in high end content, you are getting major sorcery from your crafted spell pots, uh, spell potion pots. But if you are just doing easier group dungeons or maybe you're in the overland, this is a good way to save gold and not use your spell power potions. But at a higher level, I really don't recommend it for that. Make sure you use potions instead. But it also does a small heal. Whenever you do a critical strike, it heals you. So like I said, overland, easier group dungeons. This is a really nice skill. It'll save you gold, plus it'll keep a little heals on you. If I do use this, because I actually do use it sometimes when I'm doing group dungeons, I tend to either replace my shield if I don't need it, or I will replace my back bar in Erd Light. I like to leave my bound on because of the minor resistances, but a lot of people prefer to replace their bound. Uh, I, I prefer to replace my inner light. That's kind of your call. Then we go down to the major skilled skill line. Here you're going to see inner light. Inner light is on both of the bars in, I believe, all of the rotations I'll show you today. Once again, this is an ability that you're never actually wanting to press the button. We are just slotting it for the 5% extra max magicka and gaining major prophecy, which increases our spell critical. There's also a passive down here below magicka controller. That increases your max magicka and magicka recovery by 2% for each mage's guild ability slotted. So if you're able to grab this passive at the same time, this makes this worth 7% max magicka and 2% magicka regen. So it's a really nice skill to have. 
Last but not least, I have Harness Magicka, which you do not see in my rotations below, but remember, in place of Elemental Drain, in actual content is where you would place your shield. Harness Magicka is my shield of choice, even though I'm a sorcerer and have class shields, but I'll leave this up to you. Harness Magicka caps out at 40% of your max health, but when you're taking spell damage, like Magicka damage, Elemental damage, this will help you actually gain some Magicka back. Otherwise, you can head on over to the Daedric Summoning skill line and check out Conjured Ward. Now, you can use Hardened Ward or Conjured Ward. Hardened Ward allows for a bigger shield, 50% of your max health. Conjured Ward helps you and your allies with a little bit of Magicka, as well it lasts longer. It's up to you which shield you prefer. It might also depend on the content, but you definitely want to be slotting a shield where you have Elemental Drain, and those are your shield choices. Last but not least, we have our ultimates. We will be using the ultimate from Destruction Staff, Elemental Rage. This is a great AoE ultimate. It's just absolutely brutal and smushes enemies, so this is a really, really good ultimate to use. This is the one we'll be slotting and actively using. The second ultimate we'll be using is Meteor. I have Shooting Star, but some people use Ice Comet. Once again, your call. This ultimate, I don't actually use that much. If I know there's a lot of trash, I will use it up because I know I'll regain my ultimate before the next boss fight. But generally, I'm actually having, putting this on my bar for the Magicka, for the Mages Guild Magicka passives. You can go ahead and use it on trash as long as you make sure you're going to have your ultimate built up again before your next boss fight where you'll be using the Destruction Staff ultimate. So I want to give you a couple tips before I start showing you these different rotations on uh, what to do. First of all, whenever you are practicing your rotation and not actually doing a parse, I really recommend you use normal dropped potions. This means that these are just potions that the enemies, mobs, drop on their own that you can pick up for free all over the place, buy for dirt cheap uh, at the guild store. Use these when you're practicing your rotation. Do not use your good crafted spell power potions. Secondly, the thing I already talked about, make sure you slot elemental drain whenever you are practicing up against a dummy. That minor magic of steel is going to really help you out. Plus, you're used to having it in a group because your healer will put it up. When you are just practicing your rotation, just trying to get better at it, I really recommend using a regular target dummy. Now, these will be called target skeletons, whether you, you know, bought one from the crown store, bought it from a guild trader, whatever. If you would like to actually test your DPS, it is more standard to be testing your DPS on a 6 million dummy. Here I have a fancy one that came with a crown store pack, but you can also find 6 million health target dummies. They'll have robust in their name. That is what you should be using to actually test your DPS. But if all you're doing is practicing, go ahead and use the 3 million guy. Food. Always make sure you use food while you are practicing and while you are parsing. This helps your stats. It doesn't just give you health. It helps all your magic and whatnot. So definitely make sure you always have food. And of course, keep the same Mundestone you normally use. There is something where you can change it and you'll end up cheesing your parse, which just means making it higher where in realistic combat, it's not going to be higher. Just go ahead and keep the same Mundestone you would normally use for combat. For this, always make sure, especially if you're testing or, you know, really, really practicing and you're checking what your DPS was after you practiced against a dummy, make sure that you kill the dummy. If you do not kill the dummy, your DPS slowly drops as you're not doing damage to it but waiting to come out of combat so you just want to make sure that if you are going to be looking at your dps after your little practice session make sure you kill the dummy all the way until he's dead another thing is if you're practicing and you accidentally skip a skill maybe you thought it fired but it didn't don't get frustrated and try to go back to that skill just skip it and carry on with your rotation if you try to go back to a skill that you missed or something like that, you are actually just going to mess up your rotation even more. So just go ahead and skip it and hit it the next time you should be hitting that skill. And last but not least, focus on improving your DPS number. Don't focus on exactly what that number is. 
you'll see a lot of people get 20,000, 30,000, heck, some people 40 or 50,000 DPS. Don't focus on what the number is for yourself. Focus on just improving your number. If you normally get 10,000 DPS, focus on just trying to get to 11,000. Once you can consistently consistently get 11,000 DPS, focus on improving it to 12,000. Focus on your number, not what that number is. I really highly recommend checking out the written guide of this video on MissBizPlays.com. I did cover some aspects I didn't cover in this video and vice versa, so definitely check it out. As well, I've written out all the different rotations I'm about to show you as well. I did parses and showed you what gear I used and my entire setup on the website for each rotation for champion point 160, champion point 405, and champion point 810. That means that I show how I have my champion points set up, what gear I'm wearing, what parse I got, everything on that written guide. So be sure to check it out on MissBizPlays.com. You can get to it by clicking the link below the description. Now, the very first rotation I'm going to show you is one of the easier, completely static ones where we don't really worry about it. And you don't have to worry about crystal frags at all. So here I'm going to be using Crushing Shock, Flame Touch, which when you're going to grab it, it's called Destructive Touch actually in the skill line. Bound, Inner, Haunting Curse, Blockade of Storms, Liquid Lightning, Bound, Inner, and Elemental Drain. Some people prefer to have Liquid Lightning on your front bar and Haunting Curse on your back bar. Go ahead, find out what's more comfortable for you. Those will be on all of my different rotations, so just keep trying it out and see what you prefer. How this rotation works is, first of all, when you're doing something, you will always use your ultimate first, but as I'm explaining the rotation, I'm not gonna go ahead and use my ultimate. I'm gonna get Elemental Drain on the target dummy. Then I'm going to go Elemental Blockade, Light Attack, Liquid Lightning, Bar Swap, Haunting Curse, Light Attack, Destructive Touch, Light Attack, Force Pulse. Then I'm going to continue, sorry, not Force Pulse, Crushing Shock. Then I will continue using Crushing Shocks until I need to reapply that elemental blockade. So I'm gonna do it a little bit faster here. And you'll notice sometimes I do my light attacks before the first skill on a bar. Sometimes I don't, I'm not quite sure what's best, but just go ahead with what feels good. Light attack, wall, light attack, liquid lightning, bar swap, there we go. There you saw I got three different crushing shocks in before it made sense to swap bars to go put wall on. This rotation is very simple. Another thing I'll note is that if you for some reason have a master staff, particularly an inferno staff, I really recommend using that staff while doing this rotation because that will help flame touch do more damage and cost less, so it helps with your sustain. Now, let's go ahead with how we're going to do this rotation. Once again, or as always, we are going to base this rotation off of when elemental blockade starts and ends. Of course, Elemental Drain, that's just kind of a debuff, so we'll always put that on our skeleton. But I'm going to go Light Attack, Blockade, Light Attack, Liquid Lightning, Bar Swap, Light Attack, Haunting Curse, Light Attack, Flame Clench, Light Attack, Rushing Shock. On my next go around, I'm going to use Light Attack, Wall, Light Attack, Liquid Lightning, Swap, Flame Clench, and then Crushing Shock until my wall runs out. The reason I'm doing this is that once you see in real time, you do not need to apply Haunting Curse every single time. So you're just gonna go back and forth. I'll speed up a little bit so you can see why we're moving. Wall, oops. All right, let's uh, try that again. Wall, liquid, haunting, flinch, spam, 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 spam. Wall, liquid, clench, spam. 
Spam. Spam. Spam. Now you'll see how you saw that my haunting curse didn't run out by the time I had swapped back and I wanted that second free explosion, so I did not reapply it. Now, if you want to make your rotation a little more dynamic, it's going to be even better. By making it dynamic, I mean use your wall and your liquid lightning and your elemental drain, but then whenever you get to your front bar, you're going to want to see, okay, is my flame clench out and is my haunting curse out? I'm going to use my spammable. Okay, flame clench is out, use that. Oh, haunting curse is out, use that. Then I swap to my back bar, reapply my dots. Go back, flame clench is out, use that. Keep using my spammable and only apply haunting curse and flame clench when it runs out. That is a dynamic rotation or a semi-dynamic rotation. It's not fully dynamic. So it will improve your DPS, but only do it if it makes sense for you. If it's easier just to use wall, liquid lightning, curse, clench, spam, 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 wall, liquid lightning, clench, spam, then use that because you not messing up and not getting frustrated will probably net you better DPS. I'm gonna show you a little bit of this rotation in action. I will be using a dynamic front bar, which means I'll probably only apply clench and curse as needed. I won't be sticking to the completely static rotation, but you'll notice on my back bar, it's always the same old, same old. Start with my elemental drain, my ultimate, and let's get going. You'll notice during that, I did need to use a heavy attack. Whenever you need to use a heavy attack because you're running low on magicka, please make sure that you're not letting your dots drop off. Make sure that you're doing both of your damage over times and then your heavy attack. Or flip to your back bar early, do a heavy attack, and then do your damage over time. When you're doing a heavy attack, you can actually, while you're holding down the button, press your skill a bit button and it will do that skill as soon as the heavy attack is done. Quick recap, this rotation is wall, liquid lightning, curse, clench, spam crushing shock until you need wall, lightning, clench, spam crushing shock until you need wall, rinse and repeat. Our second rotation I'm going to show you is extremely similar. The only difference is I'm going to be using Mage's Fury instead of Clench. Now, this makes this rotation even easier than the last one. What you're going to do is if the enemy is above 20%, you're going to use Crushing Shock. If they're below 20%, you're going to use Mage's Fury. You don't actually use both of these at the same time. So you are going to do like before. Wall, Liquid Lightning, curse and then just use your spammable whatever it is until you need to reapply wall wall liquid lightning skip curse spammable and repeat now when they're below 20 percent you'll use wall liquid lightning curse and then mage's fury which we just killed our dummy but you're going to use mage's fury instead of crushing shock as your spammable. So it is a super easy rotation. Let's see. Wall, liquid lightning, 
curse, and then I would use Mage's Fury if they were below 20%. Notice that I am doing light attacks in between, so make sure you do that. And once again, if curse is still running, you're going to skip it. When you need to go back, apply wall, start your rotation over again. That is going to be your below 20% rotation. Above 20%, it's the exact same rotation. It's just you're going to be using Crushing Shock instead of Mage's Fury. Super simple, but it is pretty boring. Of course, since we're no longer using Destructive Quench, if you have an Asylum Stab, that is really good for a Magicka Sorcerer to use because of our spammable, which is Crushing Shock. If you're not using Crushing Shock, of course, then you won't want to use an Asylum Staff. Our next rotation is the one that I would normally use. So with this rotation, once again, very, very similar to what I've shown you so far. I'm only changing out one skill kind of thing. I'm going to put Crystal Fragments in that second slot on my front bar. I am not using Execute and everything else is staying the same. Very, very similar rotation. Once again, like all of our rotations, we're going to start off with Wall, Liquid Nightning, and then Bar Swap. Haunting Curse. And then we're going to use Crystal Frags whenever it procs. And, of course, spam Crushing Shock. Restart it over, skip Haunting because it hasn't run out yet, and just use my Spammable. If Crystal Frags happens to proc, I'll use that. Continue on my rotation as usual. This is the rotation I tend to use. You'll notice that when your Crystal Frags procs, the icon now changes to like a little pink color. This is part of the base game and it's a huge help to Magicka Sorcerers everywhere. You also notice I have a little sound that goes ding every time it happens for me. That is using the Srendar add-on. Using the Srendar add-on, I'll actually show you the setting right now if I can get to it here. Settings, add-on, Srendar. With Srendar, I actually have everything set to do not display. I don't want to actually use it as my buff tracker. Everything is set to do not display. But somewhere in here, I'm going to need to find it. I have an option that says, hey, please make a sound when proc abilities are able to be procced. I believe it's under general. Here we go. Play sound on proc. Srendar ability proc. That's the sound I have. I enable proc animations that makes the little border of my skill kind of go all funny, uh, funny looking. But that's my options and that's how I hear that extra little sound whenever Crystal Frags procs. Like I said, they did recently make it so that your ability changes icon when it procs, which is super handy. But I really enjoy the sound because I'm usually not staring at my ability bar while I'm in the middle of a big fight. This is the rotation I really, really recommend if you are using a build that involves an Asylum Staff. In my opinion, and from what testing I've done, uh, though this maybe can be proven mathematically wrong, if I have an Asylum Staff, I'm better off keeping up this rotation than I am using my Mage's Wrath because of the extra bonuses that I get from the Asylum Staff procs. Now, if you're not using an Asylum Staff, which lots of new builds and gear setups do not use, then this next rotation, rotation number four, is what I am going to recommend to you. All I did to change this setup from the last one is I replaced Inner Light on my front bar with Mage's Fury. Mage's Fury is what I'm going to use instead of Crushing Shock after 20%. This is the build I'd recommend if you do not have an Asylum Staff and you have the ability to, you know, be able to deal with Frag's randomness. So I'm going to use Wall, Liquid Lightning, Curse, Spammable, use Frag's as it procs. Keep going and keep going. Let's pretend this guy is under 20%. Oh, he almost really is, so we'll just wait for that. Keep my... Keep me going here, Wall. Liquid Lightning, Haunting, under 20%, so I'm going to use Mage's Wrath instead. Still using my Crystal Frag procs when they come out. Carry on that same rotation I've been using this whole time. 
I personally don't care for this rotation. I like the simplicity of having the Asylum Staff and Inner Light on my front bar to give me a little more Max Magicka and all that. But this is a really good rotation as well and is probably actually a better rotation to be using if you're not using the Asylum Staff. You'll notice that all of my rotations were pretty much the same in the aspect that they always used Blockade, Liquid Lightning, and Haunting Curse. You only changed what other abilities we were using for a Magicka Sorcerer DPS. It's all about what's comfortable for you and what you enjoy doing most. Keep in mind, like I mentioned, a lot of people will put Haunting Curse on the back bar and Liquid Lightning on the front. You can definitely try that. And what you want to focus on is seeing what your uptime is. If your uptime is really low on your Haunting Curse, maybe you'll want to put it on the back bar and try to get it higher. Generally, you really, really want your Haunting Curse to be above 80%. Uptime, which you'll notice on debuffs out on combat metrics. And this is realistically only going to happen if you're using a semi-dynamic -dy rotation. It will not happen if you're using a completely static rotation like I gave you the option of. But that is what you want to focus on is your uptimes. So go ahead and try it out. Well, I think that's the end of Magicka Soric rotations and finger pressing. Keep in mind, I have even more information on the written guide, which is now up on my website, MissBizPlays.com, right now. As well, I kind of go over if you'd like to use some Psijic abilities in your rotation. And I have, you know, actual pictures of parses and of all the gear I tried using with different champion point setups and different champion point tiers on that written guide. So you can see what I'm achieving with 160 champion points and X gear and maybe see if you can get up there or maybe even beat me. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments below or in the comments on my website. I would love to answer them and I hope that you spend the next little while practicing your rotation and finding which rotation works best for you. Practice that up and I'll see you in the next time that we go to Magicka Sork School. Bye for now.